All right, folks, welcome back to Behind the Start Line. My name is Eric Burnett. I'm your host as always, and here with me co-hosting Troy Schooley. How's it going, Troy? <laughs> Good to see you again, Eric. Hey, man. Yeah, got- the, the opening is getting better. You're, you're opening for me, at least. Yeah, Do you I, go I home mean, and work? Do you go home and work on that? I haven't yet. I think it's, you know, because I don't want to discredit just the, you know, the the budding relationship. Not that our relationship was not budding prior to the podcast, but I feel like we're growing closer throughout this process. Right. And, you don't want to make a mockery of like my my introduction. You want to do it proper, right? Right, right. You and don't hope, make it cheap. Right, it, exactly. And I mean, I you're hope, bordering that. And I was about to say, I you're, hope I, you're getting really close to okay. that. That one was close. Okay. All right. Well, but I'll, you know I'll, what? It is I'll better it than um, not pronouncing my last name correctly. <laughs> Never going to live that one down. So um, at least you're st- at least you got schooly right at this point. <laughs> so um, big big uh, episode today. <laughs> big this episode. Is a, this is a good. Go- I mean, they're all we always talk. They're they're all great. Yeah. But to be able to uh, you know showcase some of the P three R uh, team members. Yep. Uh, I think will be super cool to yeah. to talk to them and get some stories and see what happens. Yeah. The, you know, the theme of this episode is meet the team and, um, we're trying something we've never done before. We're going to have more than one, uh, guest on an episode and we're not talking just two, we're talking five ladies and gentlemen. So, um, you know, strap good. We, in. So we got, uh, we got operations represented today. We got marketing and communications represented mm-hmm. partnerships, youth and finance finance. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those things like, You'd say, how can finance be exciting? But I promise you, we're going to make sure it's exciting for you guys. <laughs> yeah, because he serves in he serves in two roles. So we'll talk about his second role is probably more exciting than his finance role. But the yeah. finance role is the most important role. Absolutely. I mean, there's interesting things behind every single part of this, of, of P3R. And I think, you know, a big point of this, this particular podcast episode is just to let everyone know the inner workings and how much goes into this, not just on the day of the event, but in the months, in the year plus leading up to it. You know, right. you guys, you guys are planning the marathon more than 12 months out, right? And even though we are, we're showcasing five employees today, you know, we have a full-time staff of 25. So it's, you know, hopefully we can get everybody on for a, for a little podcast, you know, couple minutes every once in a while. Yeah, and, and talk to you know just to really, I think it's important to to showcase the the people that are behind the scenes, mm-hmm. the podcast behind the star line. There's there's no more important people than the people that work behind the scenes to bring this to life. It's their passion. Yeah, it's not just a handful of people. It's just not me. It's you know, it's it's a full team. It's it's a passionate team. I think I don't want to speak for the people we're having on today, but I think we'll 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 feel that. I think we'll 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 hear that. I'm sure we will. I know each one of them on this, on this, uh, episode and they yeah. won't, they won't let us down. They won't let us down. Yeah. Well, let's, well, let's get right into it. Let's, let's, let's bring them on. <laughs> let's find out if they're going to let us down or not. Huh? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Here we go. Here's someone who I have never known to let us down. Um, he is the ops manager here. He manages the team on the day at, uh, all P3R events. And this is Brian Schmidt. Yes. Let's there go. He is. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, first guest of five joining us here today on this episode of Behind the Start Line is our ops manager. He manages the team here. Very important person indeed. And he's also become a very good friend of mine. This is Mr. Brian Schmidt. Brian, how's it going today? What's up, guys? It's good to be here. How are you doing, Eric Troy? Good. Welcome on the pod. Can't wait. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been waiting. I've been watching my email wait for his invitation since episode one. It only took yes. a couple episodes. We're good. <laughs> I mean, so here's the thing. I, I think of when I think of behind the start line in the literal sense, I think you're the you're one of the first people that comes to mind because you are you represent that team that the day of, and obviously you, you plan and you do so much leading up to it as well. Like so much of P3R does, but on the day, man, your hands are getting dirty. You're responsible for almost everything. Talk about pulling all nighters. I mean, Troy, you talk about how you and so many other members of the team do it on, on marathon weekend. And, and I believe it, but with, 
with Brian and his team, I'm just like, man, these guys are not only pulling all nighters, but they are just like grinding it out every single minute. Um, putting, you know, putting up fences, um, getting those arches inflated. Those are some of the moments where I'm just like, you know, it, it all becomes very real when the arch is up the, the night before, um, if you're having a hard time sleeping, what's stressing you out? What's on your mind? What's the one thing that you're like, Oh man, I really hope that this, you know, and I'm sure it might be something different, but if it, if it's consistently one thing, what's the thing? I mean, it's consistent across the board of all of our events, not just marathon Mm -hmm. is it's road closures. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for marathon, our start line starts to get set up at midnight. So we have people on the road starting at midnight way before the start of the race. But for all of our events across the board, the thing that I'm always anxious about and thinking about, make sure we had everything planned out is those road closures Mm -hmm. because we're not doing anything until those roads are closed. And as we all know, the city of Pittsburgh, we're not a great city. It's not a nice square downtown. We have roads coming from the side. We have bridges, we have tunnels, uh, and being down there, it's real easy for cars to get trapped within our closure. Yep. So to get all these cars out for it's safe, not only for the runners to run the event in a few hours, but to get our, our team in the road to start getting the setup. But more often than not, what is causing the, the holdup? Is it a, a parked car? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, we always, you know, there's always a car parked on the course and getting, um, especially some of the events that happen uh, after a Steeler game or mm-hmm. on the North Shore or South Side after a Saturday night night out, those cars are there. So it takes some time to get the tow trucks in there to get them removed. What What's your favorite race? What's your favorite pre 3 r race throughout the year? Do you like the shorter ones best? Do you like the Liberty Mile the best? Because it's like, man, I only have to worry about this one mile of road. I mean, the Liberty Mile by far is my favorite event. You know, okay. after working here for a few years, I was like, I got to figure out what my favorite is because I'm going to get asked this and I don't want to, oh, I like them all. But it is, <laughs> uh, it, it is the They're Liberty Mile. And, and it's not just because it's the, oh, okay, it's only one mile of road I have to worry about because it is the shortest distance, mm-hmm. but it is Liberty Avenue, one of the busiest roads in the city of Pittsburgh on a Friday night at rush hour. So that, gives its own list of challenges already. Right. But just the, the compact nature of the event. I know early on when you guys talked with Bob from Fleet Feet uh, about the event in Troy, Med- we're in and out of downtown Pittsburgh in three hours. And it's like, we've never been there before. We're going to do a time-lapse next year, Brian. It was Eric's idea. Yes. I so we're going to put that. a time-lapse up at, at like 6.15, 6.20. And just watch it because it'll be impressive. Yeah, oh, it'll be it'll be amazing to see. Yeah. yeah, totally. Well, speaking of amazing things, what's and this is kind of put you on the spot, but what is the craziest thing you have ever seen at a race? Craziest thing, oh. and, and it might not have to be like specifically ops oriented, but just in all the races you've seen. Huh. There's a. We could have a podcast uh, with on. Yeah, you know, this could be an episode. Alone, I was going to uh, say what I've seen. I think one of the craziest and wildest moments I had, and it's fitting for this time of year, was a few years ago um, at the Steelers 5K. We are on the road. We're getting ready to start the race. We got our bike team out in front, you know, to clear the way for the runners, make sure no cars are on the course, but to lead the, the, you know, the front runners. And I'm at the start line. I'm giving the runners their, their final instructions, you know, tell them to step up to the start line. We're... 30 seconds out. And I let them know the next sound they hear is the gun. And that's the start of the race. I give them that instructions. I go to turn to clear out and I hear this loud bang. And I'm like, it's supposed to be 30 seconds before this gun goes off. Mm -hmm. Quickly turn around, stop all the runners. They, you know, they've taken two steps off the start line, go to find out one of the bike team members is pumping up his tire to get ready to go pump it up too much and explodes. And that's what sounded like the gunshot to start the race. Oh my god! And it was just like, you want to talk about timing. If this happened 10 minutes earlier, it's it's no big deal. But it is right after I told the runners, they have 30 seconds before the start of this race. Next sound they hear is the gun. Oh, I mean, talk about an adrenaline (laughs) dump for everyone. (laughs) I want to hear more of these crazy stories. (laughs) And I feel like you really are. Like I said, whenever we first brought you on, you are like the essence of behind the start line. That's why we do it. 
And that's why you're perfect to lead the ops team, man, because you guys have a very <laughs> serious, I mean, you have a very serious job. The whole event hinges on your job. There's, there's tremendous pressure. And yet you're there at the finish line with a smiling face on giving out high fives and having fun with the runners, but also the rest of the team. And dude, you're, you're the man. Appreciate it. Yeah. You're the man, Bri. Yes, sir. Thanks, Troy. All right, guys. Uh, next, we're going to be moving into our second guest here of five, another very familiar face and a good friend of mine. This is our VP of Partnerships and Runner Experience at P3R. So we talk a lot about experiences on this podcast, and you guys know how important it is uh, to this to this company. So um, without further ado, Caroline Fitzgerald, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so Hi, good to see you. Hi, Troy. <laughs> I, I feel like it's been forever. I mean, like everyone, I feel like I'm going to say this for every single person who comes on in the next, you know, hour. Um, I just, I, I miss seeing you guys. I miss seeing you and it's good to have you here with us. I know, Eric, I miss your voice on the microphone <laughs> announcing the voice of the Pittsburgh Marathon. Yeah. Caroline, obviously super important member of this team. Um there's so much that you do to make uh, every event with P3R such a fantastic experience. Um, and we just want to lead off by asking you in, you know, it, in reference to experiences, what's your most memorable experience? What's Caroline's most memorable experience with P3R? Eric, that's like the hardest question to answer. I, 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 have lead, been... off, I lead off. I, the watermark is high. I have been like stressed out about answering this question all morning because I have so, <laughs> so many favorite memories. Um, I don't know. We have some great memories um, being along the Gap Trail at like 2 a.m. with runners going by. Um, some good times happen there. Um, I love the moment at the Liberty Mile um, when we're at the Fleet View Pittsburgh team and we're at the start line and then the gun goes off and then we sprint across Sixth Avenue to get to the finish line. It's like a hustle to get there. Um, I don't know. I think overall though, in this mo it's a moment that happens every single year and Troy, you're usually, well, you're always there for this moment, but we go and visit the finish line of the Pittsburgh marathon, um, on Saturday night when it's just calm and still, mm. and, um, just kind of like do a last check to see, um, if everything's in place for the next day. And I don't know, it's just always, it's like that moment that you're like, wow, um, the team has pulled this off and it's going to happen tomorrow and our runners are coming out. And, uh, I love that. So that's, that's a great the answer. Top one. That's a, that's a great answer. And I, I never really thought of that. That's like the, the quiet before the storm, but there is something special about that moment because you know that you put so much work in to get to this moment in 10 hours from when we stand there, we usually go at dark, you know, between nine and midnight on Saturday night, that there's going to be 30,000 people running down the boulevard. So it, it, that's a great answer. Wow. Okay. All right. So obviously, you know, you, you maintain and you build our, uh, on relationships that we have with partners um, through P3R um, and those partners are integral to bringing these amazing experiences to life. Um, What's, what's your favorite, uh, partner feature or activation that you've done, or, you know, maybe that's in the works that you can kind of give us a little preview about. Okay. This was a really easy one to answer. So okay. we should have started with this one. Um, <laughs> Warm up. but I am, I'm kind of obsessed with Pittsburgh. I think a lot of people know that about me and like the intersection of Pittsburgh and running, um, it's really my sweet spot. So it's such a pleasure to work for P3R. Um, but I absolutely love the Dick Sporting Goods and Brooks Running collaboration on the Pittsburgh Marathon shoe that we do. Mm -hmm. um, we've done, is it three iterations now, Troy? Uh, yeah, 16, no, four. We're up to four. We're up to four. Right. Yeah, yeah. This, um, year, this year will be five. This year will be our fifth collab on this yeah. such special shoe that encapsulates the spirit of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh runners. I love it. Um, it's yeah. when we're out running on the trail and we see people wearing them, it just like warms my, my Pittsburgh running loving heart. Um, and it's just really fun to work on the whole Dick Sporting Goods team, the Brooks running team. Um, it's just, uh, this beautiful, um, collaboration and it turns into a wonderful product that a lot of people enjoy and wear throughout the year. But there's so many people that wear it to, you know, sporting events. And I see people in the grocery store with them. I'm like, man, this is just great exposure for not just the Pittsburgh marathon brand, but 
Brooks is such a quality shoe. Dick's Sporting Goods, such a quality retail store. It's just, it, it really brings three really great entities together. And that's what we always look for in, in partnerships is how do we collab with all these great partners? And I, I think the shoe is probably one of the best examples that this thing continues to grow. And, and people order them from around the country, which is awesome. So we love our shoes. Cool. Well, I mean, when we talk about partners for the Dick Sporting Goods Pittsburgh Marathon or all of, all of the P3R events for that matter, you guys have some of, if not the best, just to name, you know, some of the title sponsors, obviously Dick Sporting Goods, UPMC Health Plan, FedEx, Brooks, Chick-fil-A, UPMC Sports Medicine, Bank of America, she- Sheets, and PNC. Those are the title ones, Marathon Weekend, right? But you guys, there are so many more uh, throughout the whole year. Um, what you do is awesome. Maintaining it is incredible. Um, and the new partnerships that you're looking for, because I'm, I'm sure that's a huge part of the business as well, is that you always have your, your eyes out for that next partner. Um, I'm correct in, in saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 they can bring that new activation, that, that freshness. Um, and so what is it that you're looking for? Is there something specifically that, um, you know, a new partner is what you're trying to find right now? Yeah. So where do I start with this one? I think I'm going to start by quoting Troy. Um, he's probably said this quote on this podcast, but I, have, I don't think I haven't. I haven't. You can unveil it now. I've we're said gonna it enough. Unveil it. Yeah. This is like, we have this on the bulletin board in all of our offices. I have it in my home office. Oh, I'm excited um, the, to hear this. And the quote is sponsors help pay for events. Partners help build events. Um, so Troy, that, I think everybody in the running industry knows that quote. Um, and that's just really like our mantra in the partnerships um, department at P3R, at the whole organization. We are looking for brands that we can work with um, to help us build our events and create events that runners love. So my title is Partnerships and Runner Experience. It is that because we are always looking for partners that, that are going to help us develop the runner experience. So we're so fortunate at P3R that we do have so many longstanding partnerships with UPMC Health Plan and FedEx and PNC and Bank of America, Dick Sporting Goods, Fleet Fee Pittsburgh, all of these partners that are committed to that, as committed to that runner experience as we are. So when you ask what kind of new partners are we looking for, we're looking for partners with that same mindset. And if somebody comes to us and they're they're not as interested in building that and that runner experience and taking care of the runner. Um, we'll, we'll say maybe this isn't a great fit um, because there it's always the best partnership when there's that overlap and the runner experience is at the center of our partnership. Totally. totally. Yeah. No, so no is a very powerful word that we're fortunate to be able to use here. Um, and the reason why we talk about that is, you know, there's a lot of people that want to give us money, but if they're not going to bring runner benefits or be a partner, like Caroline said, we, we don't really want sponsors. We can, those are easy. We want partners that are going to add to our runner experience. Um, and that's, you know, our, our, our laundry list of, of great partners do that. And frankly, a lot of them have been around for a long time because we've let them in. We, we've let them collab with us. You know, we've let them develop ideas with us. Um, so they feel a part of what we do and their success is our success and our success is their success. And I think that's a, that's a major key of really of our industry right now. It's so important to have these partners versus just sponsors because um, some people find out the hard way, you know, taking money just really isn't always the best thing to do. Sure. Yeah. The, our partners are part of our team at P3R and mm-hmm. um, we are, we're, we're working already for 2021 to make it, the best year yet. And um, I know you guys are, I know you are because I just, the fire I feel like is burning like hotter than ever right now, brighter and hotter than ever to just churn out the best ever. So we're itching. We're itching. itching. Yes. I don't know if these podcasts help me either. So we had, we had, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like as, as we talk about it more and more, I gotta get back. I gotta get back. Yeah. So we are, we will make it the best. Yeah. I'm just, I'm ready to be back at that finish line Saturday night, calm before the storm, ready for the next morning. I love it. We need like, that's, I think, you know, Brian Schmidt just did a perfect job of explaining, um, you know, giving us the picture of what the Liberty mile is like in a beautiful, 
a beautiful image from that event. And I think Caroline, you just gave us a beautiful image from the marathon. Well, Caroline, I have one more question for you and it's not P3R related, but um, uh, as I don't know if how many of you folks who are listening know I'm a wedding DJ and one of my, the highest honors that I've ever had as a wedding DJ was to be the DJ for Caroline and her husband, Adam's wedding. And I got, I have a favorite moment from that wedding and you know, I'm sure your favorite moment was getting married to your husband. I get it. But other than that, what was, I know where you're going. I love what, was your, it. what was your favorite moment from your wedding day? So you took my first answer. Of course, it was marrying my wonderful husband. Um, but so there is a long standing tradition in my family, um, where our favorite part song to dance to at a wedding and fellow to is Milo paradise by the dashboard light, yep. where we do a whole girls versus boys, men versus women dance off. We sing, we know every single word. My brother comes, Tanner comes in and does like the baseball announcer yep. part in the middle. It's like a whole show and it's. It's pretty epic. It's I impressive. Said, it I is have, impressive. I have it written right there. Paradise by the dashboard. Yeah. Right? I put I, meatloaf down as she was saying yeah. it because that was my favorite <laughs> part. Um, tell Adam I said hi, by the way. I will. Yeah. yeah. I and, will. And honestly, and I, I'm not even kidding. That's one of my favorite fondest memories from any wedding that I've ever DJed, probably any event I've ever DJed. So thank you for that. And add that to the list of all the amazing memories that P3R has given me as a DJ and I can't thank you enough. So Eric, I can't thank you enough truly for everything. So thanks for having me today. It was so fun talking with you guys. Um, You're welcome back whenever. Caroline, thank you so much for everything. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I said this to Brian as well, but most of all, looking forward to seeing you in the future at the in-person events that are going to happen soon enough for P3R. So. Me too. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Troy. Right. Thanks, Caroline. Keep up, keep up the Bye. great work. This is the first time we're doing multiple guests. So this is all um, like rapid fire here. Yeah. It, Hi, I, Jane. <laughs> let me give you a proper introduction. We just, we got kind of the, Troy and I were getting caught up in the whole, like just rapid fire nature of this all. <laughs> Caroline just left us and it's just like, boom, straight into Jane, which I guess is fun. It's exciting, hard to follow, but, Caroline. Nah, you'll do fine. <laughs> um, so Jane, she's our public relations specialist here at P3R. Um, she's actually who I work with most directly. And um, so Jane and I have a cool relationship. And she's also has some incredible runner stories, um, not just from other runners in P3R, but for herself. She's she's a pretty incredible runner herself. So we've got a lot of things to talk about, um, but we'll just jump into it. Let me start out by saying, how are you doing, Jane? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Good. We're good. Yeah. Having fun. <laughs> we always we all- have fun on these, Jane. We really do. We could sit here all day. We would yeah. I wouldn't get any work done, but I could just sit here all day and have a podcast. Maybe a, maybe, yeah. maybe someday. P3R would just go down the tubes, but the podcast would really shine. So it would take off, I'm sure. Yeah, take off. <laughs> but uh so. so public relations specialist, P3R. Explain a little bit of of what you know, your day to day, this wasn't one of the questions that we, that we threw your way earlier on to prep with. So I realized that, but if you can explain just a little bit, and again, I, I pretend to be a businessman. So these, these titles, uh, I need help. I need help. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things, you know, with our events and with, uh, the runners that we have and running by nature is that there are so many inspiring stories. Um, and so from the PR side of P3R, I focus on getting those stories out there. Um, you know, we want to inspire any and all to run with us. So I think a big part of that is, you know, knowing that running is something that everyone has their own journey and story with. Um, It's something that people can step away from in life, but always come back to. Uh, And so a lot of my job, I'm out there looking for stories, you know, on social or things like that. And then also trying to connect with reporters to get the stories out there. Cool. So, I mean, I got to imagine P3 runner, um, you know, the, the folks that we have blogging and consistently posting to social you probably have your hands all over that. That's a big thing for, for Jane, right? Yeah. So a lot of, I focus um, on the blog too. So some mm-hmm. of them will jump in and they will be, you know, uh, they will be uh, authors for us for the blog. And then we'll also look at charity a lot with that. So we do a lot of charity blogs to make sure that those are getting spotlighted as well. Cool. So like run for a reason, are you, you're yeah. really involved with that as well? Yeah. The run for a reason stories are awesome. I mean, they're, where we find some of the most inspiring stories through charity runners. 
out of all those stories, we're really going to give the hard question here to start things off. What's the most amazing runner story that you've ever come across? So this is actually easy for me. Um, I mean, it's difficult in the sense that every story is great, but there is just one, you know, I've been with P3R for a year, so not that much time, but there is one runner that has really stuck with me. Um, He actually was one of our movers of the year. We did that for the marathon. His name is Rafi. He's a five-year-old boy um, who is actually a double leg amputee. Um, and he never lets that hold him back. So, um, his mom actually submitted him, nominated him for mover of the year. And she said that she, that he inspires her to run because he has, um, partial face paralysis. So she'll run alongside him to make sure that he's safe and he's okay. But he got her moving out the door because he's just so passionate about running. That's cool. Yeah. So that's awesome. He shared, you know, she shared some great photos of him and, and he actually has a song he sings about go Rafi. So it's, it's really inspiring. Oh my gosh. I hope to meet him at some point. And I hope. So essentially with mover of the year, we gave um, the movers of the year free registration for 2021. So he is registered for marathon 2021. Oh, that's exciting. I mean, put a smile on your face too. I mean, yeah. And you did a perfect job uh, explaining, but Man, talk about motivation. The, the kid is just, he's a ray of light. So we can't wait to see him at the, the probably the kids. I mean, who knows? Rafi might be doing the 5K sometime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, th- he's so determined. Um, and to get his mom involved, like Jane explained, I mean, the, the story is just tremendous. Very inspiring. Um, so, you know, we talk, I, we spoke about all those different ways that you are gathering stories and we talked about P3 runners. We talked about, um, you know, the run for a reason. Is there any other, like, way? do you just go and just check out random running places on social media? Is, is that part of what you're doing as well? So I think, you know, our biggest, um, way of looking for stories is we will ask for them. So mm-hmm. mover of the year, you know, we got a lot of nominations. It was over a hundred some nominations for that. And we'll find stories that way for runners that sign up for run for a reason. We ask them, what's your why? Um, please submit, you know, like, what are you running? Who are you running in honor of what inspired you to run for your charity? And then honestly, with social media these days, I mean, our whole comms team, we, we engage and follow our race hashtags uh, and so there have been multiple times that I get a DM on my personal Instagram from run with P3R that says, Hey Jane, we saw this using hashtag move Pittsburgh. This is incredible. And it's, you know, I think nowadays too, a lot of people are more vulnerable and raw on social media, uh, being realistic about their life and, and things like that. So there are some really great stories that we'll find on social media and I'll just reach out to them. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So what's your, what's your background? I mean, do you have, do you have a background in, I mean, it almost sounds like you need to have a background in writing. It just in, you know. <laughs> I actually, I, I loved writing all of high school yeah. and college. And that's kind of what inspired me to go the PR route. I think a big part of doing PR too, that I love is it's good news. Um, I think the world is full of bad news. Uh, mm-hmm. Welcome to 2020, especially. <laughs> and I just yeah. feel like I was always inspired as a kid, like I want to spread kindness. And so PR felt like a job that I could do that. Uh, And so, yeah, so I started writing a lot in college, um, taking a lot of writing courses and stuff, which has helped with that. Very cool. Well, it's paying off. And Jane has has taught me things too, which is always great to have employees working with other, you know, people teaching them things. Jane, do you, what do you think I'm going to say is what you taught me? I know exactly what you're going to (laughs) say. What? Um, I sat down, you want me to say it? Yeah, go ahead. I have it written down, but go ahead. I sat down with Troy, um, going over, you know, hit him, his interviews with the media and things like that. And the final note I said to him to always remember, he said, you have something important to say. Mm, yep. And it's something that stuck with me since. And I, Jane, I think we did that a year ago, probably when you started, but you know, I, I was, I, I feel like I was okay with the media, but her giving that little extra confidence to me and obviously being a lot younger than me, you know, a little bit less experienced, but her expertise is this PR aspect, the writing aspect. And yeah. it's something that, that has stuck with me for a year. And every time I do an interview or, or, or do a phone interview or, or live interview, I think about what Jane told me. Um, feel- you're not getting off this podcast, Jane and Eric, uh-huh. you might've been going there. Yeah, okay. You did something amazing a yep. month ago <clears throat> that everybody, I mean, People might have saw you on on the news because you were on the news and you should have been. Um, but you have to explain to our listeners what you did, why you did it. it. It's completely amazing. I'll hand it over to you. Go. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so I ran six marathons in six days, um, the first week of August 2020, in honor of MS. So my sister was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when she was 24. So about a year ago, it was actually right when I found out I got my job with P3R. It was crazy how the world's kind of collided for my running um, habits, I guess. I found out that I was selected to be a part of a 19 person relay that runs from um, San Francisco to New York City. It takes about three months and each person runs between six to seven marathons in a row. Um, so with 2020, the actual relay was canceled. So I ended up doing it right here in Pittsburgh, which to my surprise, you know, as devastated as I was that I couldn't you know, run across America with the team, having my family and also a lot of the PTR staff coming by, bringing me Gatorades, you know, some honey stinger chews and supporting me the whole way. It made it that much, you know, more special. Uh, And so we ended up raising over $13,000 for MS. Saw that. It was incredible. Like $3,500 more than your initial goal. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone on the relay, our goal is 10,000 a person. Um, and I, you know, when, when she interviewed me about the relay, she said, what are you most terrified about running these marathons? And I said, I'm actually not terrified of running them. I said, because that's me and that's my body and I can force myself to do it. I said, I'm terrified of raising $10,000. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. And then the support from, you know, everyone at work and all my friends and my family, I was like blown out of the water. I couldn't believe it. So that's so cool. Gosh, you may be an ultra runner at heart. Uh, you know, I think it might be a little crazy. Um, well, you, was, I mean, they all are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot mentally. I focused on day one, two, and three, you know, because you can't really see too far past that right away. You know, you got sure. to just focus on what's ahead. Yep. And day four is when I was super emotional. I finished day four on 10th Street Bridge, which was where I finished my first day. And I started to cry. And I looked at my mom and I said, I'm actually going to do this. And she was like, yes. And I was like, no, I know. But I just, I never saw day four. I never pictured it. And there I was finishing day four. And I was like, whoa, only two days left. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Jane. Of course. That that was totally on my list of questions to ask you too. So (laughs) um, thanks for stealing it, Troy. I had, I, I, I figured it was on your list, but it's just too, it's so good. I think we had one more question for you, but you may have mentioned Uh it at some point. So what's your favorite memory just from a P3R event. And I mean, it could have easily been Rafi. Um, you know, that, if that's your favorite memory, I totally understand. But was there anything else? Um, you know, so I have only been with P3R for a year mm-hmm. and the marathon was virtual this year. So it's actually really, really upsetting. I didn't get to experience marathon weekend. I feel like I definitely would have made my favorite memories then. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I made sure to make memories that weekend anyway. Uh, I live in Southside. And so I actually went out and I know the course runs along East Carson and just, there were a lot of runners out that weekend running it virtually. And I made a little sign and, you know, people would be running by and I'd be like, are you doing the Pittsburgh marathon? They're like, yes. Oh my gosh. And, you know, kind of just cheer them on. And so I think that, made the weekend unique for me, um, in a way that I wasn't expecting. I oh, did cool. run, I did run the, um, relay with the comms team. We all did a segment of the relay and I ran it on that Sunday. And actually, as I was coming across Smithfield street bridge, I passed a woman and I was like, wait, she was wearing one of our bibs that we had made. She printed it off. And I turned around and I said, I'm sorry, are you Lisa? And she said, yes. And Lisa was nominated as one of our movers of the year. She actually, oh she actually was one of the winners. Yeah. So you and recognized I like, oh. her. I reckon, yeah, because her husband had submitted photos of her with her nomination. And um, she was like, yes. And I was like, this is so weird. I'm sorry to be creepy, but I work for P3R and your husband nominated you for Mover of the Year. I know your whole story. Like, you know, she was like, oh, thanks. She was doing the half marathon. So she was right around mile 11, she said. Um, And so it was great to have a little moment to her on. And I said, you know, I'm proud of you. Good job. Yeah. Well, Jane, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing all these incredible stories that you do, you know, in your, in your day-to-day job. And it's, uh, you know, again, stories is what this podcast is all about. It's these important stories. Um, and I know it's a huge part of what P3R is as well. So you're a key part of the operation. So keep it up. Thanks. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Troy. Thanks for having all me, right. guys. All right. We're in the home stretch. We've passed that, you know, basically that, that third day. 
We're going in the home stretch right now. Trying to make it here. Yeah, trying to make it. So before we get started, I definitely um, made a cardinal sin here as a host. I forgot to ask for the phonetic spelling of one of our guests' last name, and here he is right now. So I'm not even going to try. Oh, should I try? Should I try? Yeah, yeah I think I you got it. Okay, Dan, here we go. I'm going give to it, give it my best shot. And Chelsea, our producer over here, she's like, oh yeah, we'll just edit this out. But I don't know. This might end up being fun enough to keep. So... Without further ado, we've got the director of finance from P3R here with us right now. And he's got a fantastic last name, and but my just pea-sized brain is having a hard time saying it. But I'm going to give it my best shot. Dan Monhemius. Oh, very good. I got Bingo. it. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Yes. Yeah. Welcome, Dan. Dan. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. We're excited to have you. Um, I don't know if you know, you're know you fully informed, but you're you're our fourth guest on with us today. And we've just been going, this is our meet the team episode. We have the, we have the whole crew, Dan. We've had, we've had a lot of the crew on. Oh, great. Yeah. So we're excited to talk to you. Um, you know, obviously you're making sure that P3R remains stable and fiscally responsible. This is a nonprofit organization, which is another thing that I had to do a little research on because I've, you know, I've known about nonprofit organizations, but I didn't fully know like what the criteria is that you have to meet, um, to be nonprofit. So maybe we can get into that a little bit, but, uh, um, you know, obviously you're, you're a big reason of the, you know, keeping, keeping, uh, P3R walking the straight and narrow. Um, so maybe let's, let's start out with that. What does it mean to be a nonprofit organization? Um, it basically means, uh, you don't have to pay income taxes like a normal corporation. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's gotta be a charitable cause behind it. Okay. And there's, um, and there's all kinds of different, you know, tax filings and stuff that go along with that. Yeah, I mean, you guys clearly, it's not just as simple as me being like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to just like file to be a nonprofit organization and I'll never have to pay taxes again. You guys have to do a lot of work. The internal revenue service. In order okay. To actual nonprofit, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And I, I, I did a little bit of research and I saw, you know, keep in mind that nonprofits are organized to provide some benefit to the public. Right. And obviously you guys are doing that clearly. Um, but I think that's probably one of those huge things that's like, okay, you know, if you're not, if you're not giving this just like glaringly obvious benefit to the public, you can't really be a nonprofit. Well, and to the kids, right? right? The kids of steel program is our, uh, is our arm of nonprofit. We, start the kids as young kindergarten. So that's yeah. a lot of our, um, a lot of our revenue, a lot of our, uh, proceeds go back in to supporting that program and helping it expand really Dan. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Right. And, yeah. and one of the other requirements too, is we've got to be audited by an independent auditing firm too, just to just make sure we're walking the street and narrow financially. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, that's something you guys, it's independent. So you probably, you probably have to pay for that also. Right. Yes. Yeah. So correct. For those of our listeners out there who are thinking, oh yeah, let's just uh yeah, how easy it is. It's not easy. (laughs) Yeah, can't be that easy. So well, that's I mean, it it, nothing about finances for a a company like this or an organization like this sounds easy to me. For first of all, you know, I do the bookkeeping for my business and every single um obviously every single customer that you have is another just line in the in in the books. And I I don't know how deep it goes for you guys, but you obviously have tens of thousands of runners, um, you know, every single year that, that are giving, are, are sending money your way. Are those people each somebody, you know, is each person a, on, on the books? Is that someone that you, Dan, have to, you know, calculate into the finances? We have 200 plus event staff. You know, it's essentially, <laughs> you, you know, that Dan has to make sure that we pay sure. you know, for, for all the events. They don't work full time with us throughout the year, but every event they're there. So they're um, independent, independent contractors, right? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, oh man, that's a lot of checks. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 For sure. Are you the only person in charge of finances here at P3R? Is there anyone else on your team or is it a solo, oper- solo operation? <laughs> Going to give a shout out to Patty Marker. She she helps in accounting too, but she's she's a big help. So yeah, so it's basically us two that are doing the final. Wow, that's incredible. What I mean, what's the hardest part for you, Dan? What's the one thing that stands out as like, oh man, if I don't just just because of the industry we're in, I think it's just a challenge to budget and plan when participants seem to be registering later and later. Because mm-hmm. maybe a lot of people don't know this, but we've got some massive fixed costs as far as you know, police and medical and Pittsburgh, you know, public works and and our wonderful DJs. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> <Too kind. laughs> 
<laughs> so whether we whether we've got like five thousand people or fifty thousand people for marathon weekend, you know, those costs are pretty much fixed. Um, it's not like we can just call up the police and say, hey, we don't need half of you know half of what you're planning to send us. Those people, we need them. You know, all of them are going to be there. So we just need to make sure that you know as people are registering later and later. You know, it's, it's kind of tough to pull those big levers to cut operational costs if you need to. Thankfully, our marketing team, you know, have been great and we're, we've never missed a budget. Um, That's awesome. But, you know, the ops team, they, they kind of make fun of me because last year before our live marathon, I was like, okay, what, you know, I'm just, I'm just conservative and I'm worried that we're not going to meet our budget. So I'm like, you know, can we cut some of these porta potties off? You know, some of the cores, so I'm calling them, hey, can we take off a few porta potties? But obviously that's not a... It's like, that is the last thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> that it's tough to um, budget for it. And people really don't understand mm-hmm. that portion of what we do with the fixed cost. I mean, you know, uh, shirts, Dan, eight months in advance, and we're paying 75% of that freight uh, in October for the marathon or, 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 or November. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like Dan mentioned, police cost DPW. They, they do a great job for their service, but we still have to pay it. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. we, we feel that we shouldn't pay that. We're, we're, we're going to pay it and take care of it. But with safety being our number one concern, we're never going to cut on, you know, police or security or things like that. So that's why Dan looks into Porta Johns. Yeah. And Dan Don't being a runner, a out. right? Well, <laughs> Dan being a runner, that's surprising that he won't, you know, wants to cut a porta john because that's right. He knows how important those are to our runners. So, and that was another thing I wanted to go into. So, Dan, you are a runner. Um, you deal with the elites a lot. Um, and so, how far does that go? You know, because that's is that one of I, I can't imagine that's normally a specialty for someone who's in charge of finances to also be working with, you know, some of the people who are participating. But, but is that, so is that just something you take yeah. on? You're like, man, I, I, I just, I am a runner. You ran at Grove city, right? Is that correct? Yes. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Awesome. So you've got some respect for the people, you know, who have the speed. And so is that just, that is what kind of drawn you to take care of? What do you, what's your role? What do you do for the elites here with B3R? Uh, basically just, you know, help them get to, I mean, a lot of it's just helping them get to where they need to be when mm-hmm. they need to be places, whether it's, you know, starting line or the media, you know, um, that type of thing or getting them things that they need or getting them checked into or helping them check into the hotel or, uh, making sure we have all the hospitality, um, up and running for them. Um, so yeah, just stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an important piece uh, and plus Dan, you have yeah. to pay them. Right, exactly. You have to make sure they and get travel, paid. Right, travel, <laughs> travel, all the expenses. Um, and, and Dan enjoys that too. I mean, that's that's a passion of his. So mm-hmm. he's a gr- great finance guy. But when we were looking for somebody to help out with the elites, it was it was a no brainer. And I, you know, uh, he was more than welcoming to do that. <laughs> Let's make it clear, right, Dan? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I kind of. Uh, even even when we're in a meeting here at P3R, sometimes I'll find myself just smiling. Like we're in a meeting, we're talking about running. Wow, how cool is this? You know, yeah, this, this is my passion. So I the fan, the fanboy. Combine yeah. my skill set of accounting with my passion for running. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it definitely is is a dream job for sure. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, this all it all makes sense now because you're able to be that much more involved on race weekend, whereas otherwise maybe not so much, but the, but because you're there working with the elites, you can be out in the trenches too, which is really neat. And, and that's one, that's one of the things I love about this job too, is, you know, my past accounting jobs, normally I'm chained to a desk for, you know, 50, 60 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Where here at P3R, I got to do a lot of different things. You know, like you said, on especially on race weekend, you know, it's very, hands on, you know, you're out there meeting with runners and helping them have a great race day. Um, that probably just answered our next question. But, um, next thing I was going to ask is what's your favorite part of your job? Yeah, I think, like I just said, I'm not, you know, at a desk, you know, yeah. doing spreadsheets hundred percent of my time. I mean, I do, do a lot of that obviously, but there's also a lot of different things, even like, you know, during the COVID era, you know, it was kind of fun to go to the warehouse and help the ops team, uh, okay. pack up some, um, you know, some of the shirts and medals and, you know, it's just fun to get out of the office and and go to the warehouse, do something different. Yeah, totally. It's cool. Well, real quick, just back to the elite athletes. Do you have a super memorable experience with them? I know, you know, there's gotta be some stories that have come out from it, but what's, what's the one 
if you had yeah, to choose. Um, I've got a lot of stories, but I know we don't have five hours. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think one of the ones that I was thinking about is uh, I had the privilege of helping uh, with the Olympic marathon trials that took place in Atlanta in February. Mm. So I was um, helping the elites uh, check in a couple of days before the marathon. And I sat next to this woman, her name was uh, Janice Anderson. And we, you know, talk for four or five hours. We're sitting right next to each other. And she was, you know, we talked about running and everything else. And she said, oh, at one point, she said, oh, I've done Western States. And for those of you that don't know what Western States is, it's a hundred mile race down in California. It's considered by Runner's World probably, um, I think they rank the top 10 hardest race in the mm-hmm. world. If you look at their, uh, their waiver, it's like you can die from everything from hypothermia to heat exhaustion to rattlesnake bites to... Uh, you know, mountain lion attacks. So, <laughs> so, so it's no joke. So anyway, I was like, wow, I don't know anybody that's in Western States. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. So la- later on that night that I went and I Google, Googled her name, I'm like, I'm just going to see what, you know, how she did. Ends up, she was, you know, one of America's top ultra runners in uh, the early 2000s. And she's won 50 ultra marathons. She was the first woman to ever break 17 hours for a hundred mile race in the entire world. What? And so I saw her, I saw her, I saw her two days later, we were doing something else. And I said, Janice, you're so humble. Like this never came up in a five hours of conversation. Um, and she's like, well, you know, yeah, just, you know, never really came up. So like, that's what I love about the police is they're, they're so humble, you know, and, yeah. and that's what, that's what I've witnessed. Even, you know, Pittsburgh held the half marathon champs and, and even at Atlanta at the trials, they're so humble and so gracious. And they're, they'll be the first to thank the volunteers and say, thank you for everything you're doing for us. They're all exactly like you, like you explained, Dan, they're just so humble. Um, I'm sure there are going to be many more uh, moments like that to come. And uh, we might need to check in on you at some point. That's what a lot of, we've been saying to most of our guests today is just because you guys have all these great moments um, that you've had by, by working in the running world and by working with P3R that it'd be fun to hear back at some point to see like how those moments, you know, what you've accumulated since it, since now. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, you very so, much. Yeah. Thank you so much Thanks, for being Dan. a part of the program and uh, keep up the great work, Dan. All right. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Troy. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Have a good day. Thanks. Yeah. All right, folks. Here we go. We are heading into our next guest. One, um, I mean, I was excited for every single one of our guests, but uh, as you guys know, one of my favorite programs here is the Kids of Steel program. So this is why I'm particularly excited to introduce our next guest, Director of Youth Programming at P3R. This is Leslie Turris. Leslie, how are you? Hi, how are you guys? Good to hey, see Leslie. you. <laughs> Good Hi. to see you too. Leslie, as I mentioned, you're you're the leader of the Kids of Steel program, um, which as we talk about a lot on on this program, it, it's founded to encourage more and more kids to stay active and keep moving. Um, I, I love it. How can you not love it? It's <laughs> so cool what you guys do. And, you know, the culmination point, of course, is the Kids Marathon on mm-hmm. Marathon Weekends, which is to me a highlight of the whole year. Um, mm-hmm. How do you keep everything organized for that massive event where you have, I mean, Troy, we've been over it before and I, and I forget, but it's, it's thousands of kids, right? It's thousands. Yeah. Of I mean, we're, we're above 7,000. I mean, yeah. we would, we would have had mid 7,000, 7,500 this year, Leslie. Yeah. Yeah. Plus uh, you know, all their parents. Plus the parents. So it turns into a 12, 13,000 person race. Our goal is eight. I think we can get to 8,000 this year. Mm-hmm. I, I think mean, that's, that's Leslie's goal too. 8,000 mm-hmm. kids. Definitely. One of the one of the largest in the country, or the largest in the country, the largest, the largest, <laughs> the largest single one mile kids event in the country. Unbelievable! And so, I, I mean, would say that Leslie manages more schools than any other um, program in the country as well, with over 180 schools now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. All right. So, how far outside of Pittsburgh are you traveling to? Because that can't all be Allegheny County. You've got to be going to Washington, to Butler, to Beaver. How far? What's the furthest from downtown Pittsburgh that you travel to? We go up to Erie and down to Greene County. So, wow. it's, it's truly a Western PA program Western over to Somerset and Evansburg, which is uh, past Johnstown. Unbelievable. As we we're saying, Chick fil A Pittsburgh Kids Marathon thousands of kids running with their parents. Um, you know, I think that many people, that many adults is a lot to deal with. 
how, how are you keeping everything organized? How are you keeping everything safe? Um, what's sort of your focus for that, that premier event? That yeah. So premier? yeah, race day is the result of a lot of planning and being on a really good team. So mm-hmm. working very closely with our operations team and our volunteer manager, Melissa, um, meeting with them on a regular basis months ahead of time where we talk through every possible scenario. So those meetings uh, turn into very long to-do lists and very detailed timelines. So we show up race morning ready to execute. And um, with the Kids Marathon, our Kids is Still coaches are kind of like our co-host for that morning because they're the ones that are bringing dozens and in some cases, hundreds of kids and their families down to that start line. So like uh, you guys said, we have almost 200 schools and my department works with our Kids is Still coaches all school year um, to make sure that they're ready and excited to get to that start line in May. Obviously, there's a ton of inspiration to behind what you do, Leslie. And so to ask you what inspires you to lead the youth programming is, you know, it's sort of a low, not, I don't want to say a loaded question, but sort of an easy question. Um, softball. Softball. There softball you go. On the post, but that's okay. <laughs> Perfect. So, but what's the, what have you always worked with, with kids? Has that has working with kids or helping to um, being there for the youth? Has that always been a passion of yours? Have you seen yourself ending up in that as long as you can remember? Yeah. Yeah. My uh, first job was in education policy over in Ohio. And when I lived in New York, I worked with uh, a youth running program there as well. So um, it's a super fun job. And you guys have been to a couple of start lines. So you see it, you see um, how much energy those kids bring race mornings. So that's very uh, inspiring for me with, uh, with this work, but on a day-to-day basis, what really inspires me are the adults that I get to work with because it takes a lot of grown-ups to make this program possible. Um, not just Derek and John from my team, who I'm just so proud to work with because they do a phenomenal job. Um, it's a running community that makes financial investments into this program. They share their love of running with local kids uh, with their support. And um, Kids is Steel is operated. It's a very flexible program model, and it's at work in so many different communities with over hundreds of uh, Kids is Steel coaches, and, and they're a phenomenal group of people. They give their time, their energy. They're so creative. They, they keep the kids moving. And when I talk to the grownups in this program, I hear a lot of... Um, of my experience. A lot of them are just like me where they didn't start running into until later in life, until they were adults. So they say what I always say, which is I wish that this program existed when I was a kid because running has given me so much and it has given them so much. So they're so excited to share this gift of running with kids at, uh, at an earlier age, earlier than what we found it. I feel like so many of the inspiring stories that we hear about Kids of Steel or any of the kids that do end up running a P3R event is the also the influence that they have on their parents or their loved ones who are adults who didn't necessarily run before the kids started getting into the program. And I, I, I got to believe that's probably a big part of what inspires you as well is just seeing those adults who their lives are changed by the kids. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, what makes Kids of Steel uh, different from other youth programs in Pittsburgh and the country? Several things, but what um, what comes to mind is that giant capstone piece through our event that we're able to put on as part of an organization. So all season long uh, with those Kids of Steel coaches, our kids are working towards a big goal, which is that Kids Marathon finish line. And that's an event created just for them. So as they're putting in the miles, they have something to look forward to. And um, as you just alluded to, that parent involvement is is unique. That's something that other sports don't necessarily get to deliver on as much as we do. Because instead of on the sidelines, uh, the kids have their parents out there on the course running side by side with them. So every kid's marathon registration includes a free adult entry. So mom and dad are invited to run that race with their kids and they get to be side by side on the course with their child and see how much they've grown as a result of participating in this program. Yeah. When these kids bring their parents, like 90% of the kids crush their parents. They're done way before their parents. But one of the funniest things during race weekend is that aspect of it. People, yeah. you know, I've talked about it, right? Leslie, kids think they're lost. They're really not lost. They just ran a lot faster than their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And we joke about it now, but what that has done is it made, it's made these parents go home and feel like I need to do something. Like I'm not in good shape right now. And you know, I think I've mentioned it before, but we've saw so many stories because the kids are so fast and the parents can't keep up that the parents change their lives because of it. So, um, this was the last question I just wanted to ask. Uh, have you, I I mean, it's a two part question. Have you been at the start line and the finish line for the kids marathon? Leslie, have you been experienced both? I can't say yes fairly. I got to I got to see a little bit of the finish line, but my role race morning is start line. Start and line. Derek is the one who'll be waiting with Shepherd. Gosh, yeah. There you go. Nice. Waiting nice. for dad to finish. I love yeah. it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Look for Derek. Go. Look for Derek, Shep. Look for him. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, because I was gonna ask which one you prefer, because they seem to be equally as inspiring. Um, you know, I'm at the start line every year and it's my favorite day of the year. And but I feel like the finish line, cause I've seen photos there and our other DJs are there and they tell me when we do our debrief afterwards, they're like, that was the best moment of the year for me. And so, you know, I got to imagine both are, are incredible in their own way. So I just was curious to see what you thought was better. I would still say start line though. I mean, it's, it's great to see the kids accomplish uh, their finish line, but the look on the coaches faces at the start line when they get to share this like huge event, like, look, this is what I, this is what I've been talking to you about all season. This is just for you. Like, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Leslie, thank you so much. Uh, we really, I'm not even kidding. I, I don't want to say that I feel it's unfair for me to say like we have a favorite of P3R here, but we definitely talk about kids of steel, I think more than any other part of it. And you guys really are at the heart of it all. So thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank yeah, thanks, Leslie. Have a good rest of the day. Keep up the great work. All right, guys. Um, I think that's going to do it. We just we met the team. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that was it was pretty good. Fire. That was fun, though. Yeah. I, I like I like having them on to showcase really all uh, you know, their expertise in all the different departments. Yep. And people, you know, we've talked about it. People just show up to a start line and they want to get a medal at the end, but they, I love showing the behind the start line aspect of it because there's so much that goes into it. Right. Um, and they deserve all the credit in the world because they work really hard to make sure that that experience that they give is, is top notch. And I think we heard from five guests today that all showed that their expertise in their field. Absolutely. And they just, and not only that, but they show, how integral it is. And hopefully it will kind of peel back that veil right. on, on P3R. And hopefully you'll get a little less people asking you, how is uh, planning a race a full-time job? <laughs> My pet peeve. I know. <laughs> My pet peeve. I haven't had one of those in like a year though. Yeah, this will definitely be one of my favorite episodes for a long time. So thank you so much to all of our guests. Um, It was Brian, Caroline, Jane, Dan, and Leslie for being with us here today. Um, We do, before we go, we've got a couple of things. uh, You know, we are taking questions from our fans who are out there. And this next one, yeah, this next one actually comes from um, a friend of mine, which is really cool. Joel Ambrose. We both went to pit together. We were in the theater department there. And I had no, I had no idea that he was sending this in, but he's told me that he's been listening. So Joel, thank you so much for this next question. All right. right. Joel's first question. These are great. Um, I'm curious uh, to what your favorite songs are, Eric, for when you're running. So Joel slash Troy, this is such a good question. And I, I don't know if we have enough time for me to go into it entirely, but you know, I'm a DJ. So music is super important to me. It may come as a shock that mostly I prefer to run without music. And here's why. Um, I do like to take in the surroundings. I like to, it's almost like a peaceful Zen thing for me. Um, and it's also a little bit more safe, not, not knocking yeah. the people who are out there running with music on. It's okay, but just be, be aware. Um, but it also gets me too hyped. Like I, yeah. I find myself when I do occasionally run with music, I run way too fast in the early miles. And then I kind of feel like garbage afterwards. Um, that's a great that, answer. I never thought about, I yeah. mean, we discourage headphones, mm-hmm. we, you know, because just because the safety has, everybody's still going to do it, but I never thought about the, the hype portion. I get that. You know, that being said, if I am going to go out and run, maybe I'm doing like a tempo run. And so I do want to be a little bit faster, uh, or maybe I'm doing a hard workout. Um, I'm a big fan. I like a ton of genres, but EDM, I'm a big fan of the big drops. I'm just going to throw some titles out there because hopefully you guys will check these out. Eyes by Cascade is one of my biggest, like, here we go. Eyes by Cascade. Classic rock, their power chords, any way you want it by Journey. 
uh, hip hop's lyricism, their stride, stride matching tempo. So with like 90 BPMs, I try and match my stride, you know, yeah. every footfall, uh, victory lap by Macklemore and Ryan Luce is one of my favorites there. And even pop music. I remember one of the first times I listened to music on a run when I got like my first iPod, I remember hearing lucky by Britney Spears and getting just like getting a little bit hype. Yeah, hyped a little up, bit man. Hype. So, you know, well, that's great. Yeah. So, at the start line, though, Joel asks, and this is another great one. What's your favorite song to play at the start line for our particip- for P through our participants? Do you go? Yeah. Do you go in your own? Like, do you feel like you play what you would want to hear, or is it like, <laughs> all right? I I've, I think I know where you're going. I think I know this answer, but let's so- go. Everything about P3R for me, all of the experiences that I have with them as a DJ is I'm thinking about, um, I'm thinking about the runners and their experience. And in turn, me seeing them gets me so hyped up. And so it's this awesome, like relationship of energy and so connection. Right. And uh, this is going to sound bad given what I just said about not coming out too hot. But for me, the start line is like, man, I got to give them a song that's going to last <laughs> yeah. them for the next 26 miles. So I kind of don't hold back. And it's pretty selfish of you. I know. <laughs> you won't do it to yourself, but you'll do it to 40,000 people. <laughs> Great. I know. Good I to know. hear that. I, I'm sorry, guys. I really am. <laughs> but so, yeah, I mean, I, I have like, I, I have a whole list here, but I'm not going to say all of them because we don't have that kind of time. But um, I have this remix of Sugar by Marie. Rune 5. It's by Anthem Kings. It's a remix and it just has a lot of fire behind it. Tonight, I'm getting over you by Carly Rae Jepsen. The girl is saying, um, call me maybe. Call me maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This is maybe a less known anthem and it hits hard. Okay. Yep. And then uh, Don Zakuduro by Don Omar. I think it was at the end of one of the Fast and Furious movies and it's it's pretty epic. Um, And the last one I'll talk about for right now is called... uh, uh, in my city by Priyanka Chopra featuring will I am. And it just, it brings in it's the, the energy's there, but it's also, it makes you, it's called in my city and it's about like embracing the city. And to me, yeah. every time I hear it at a race, I'm like, this is what it's all about. So awesome. Them. That's good stuff. Yep. Um, Joel also says he listens to the show while he's on his runs. We got Joel. a listener on the run. Thank you, Joel. Thanks for the question. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, Joel gets a free four on two shirt too, which is, which is great. So we'll send it out to Joel and hopefully he keeps listening. Yeah. And here's the other thing about Joel. It's the last thing I'll say is that I see him at, at least every marathon. He is a dedicated, hardcore Pittsburgh marathon runner. And, um, he's one of those like shining lights and I'll, you know, there's thousands of people who cross the finish line on that day. And I try and shout out as many names as possible. But the last few years I've just happened to glance up and I see Joel and see Ambrose Joel. running across the finish line. And that's you know, awesome. We're good You're friends. And a it's, shout out. Yeah. Yeah. So this is great, Joel. Thank you so much for the great question. Um, We've got one more question, folks, and this one is to you, Troy. We're thinking since, hey, we had so many people on today from P3R, so many of um, your team members, and normally we ask one of them, our, our guest, what their... Um, what they have that is would it be a surprise, uh, something about them. And so, man. Troy, we're putting you under the gun today. This is it. And <laughs> what's the one I, thing I, about Troy Schooley that we don't know? I'm not, you know... I don't think I'm that interesting, um, to be honest. And as we've had these guests on and answer, they've all been really good. And I'm like, I can't even compete like that. So, um, I I think the one thing that I, well, I'm serious. I mean, I think the one thing that people would be surprised to know about me is that I grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. Um, and people that know me probably wouldn't correlate me with a farm, but I grew up on a farm. Um, it was a family farm of my grandparents and my dad, uh, kept probably, you know, when I was younger, 35, 40, um, Herefords, uh, we had a horse at one point, we had some, you know, some different animals, uh, farm cats, things like that. So I grew up on a farm, uh, you know, bailed hay, things like that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was a hobby of my dad's. He grew up on a, on a, on a dairy farm, like I said, kept some of the cows and, and, you know, he, he ran a small, uh, masonry business, but he would come home or, or wake up in the morning and take care of the farm. And it was because awesome. it's what he knew. And, and I would try to help out as much as we, as I could. So, um, yeah. I do think though, that's where my work ethic came from. And that's why, you know, I, I, I'm very grateful of growing up on a farm because I think people that grow up on a farm have a, have a really good work ethic because you have to. You're usually waking up early or just doing things at random times that you probably 
I know my kids don't want to do nowadays. So sure. uh, I think that's that, that really instilled uh, a work ethic into me. And okay. when I go back now, I got soft hands. Now I'm 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 soft. I've lost a lot of it, to be honest. Well, you have to train. Uh, my for parents it. will tell you that. But um, <laughs> it, it, it got was, city hands. Yeah, I got city hands. But but that's okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. I want to thank Troy, uh, as always, for being here with me. And um, I want to remind everyone as well to reach out to us at run with P3R and email our, again, our new uh, mailbox behind the line at p3r.org to ask us questions just like Joel did or share a shout out that could be featured in an upcoming episode. And also you'll get some uh, complimentary swag as well. Yeah. Yeah. T-shirt coming to Joel. Yeah. Big time, buddy. We can't wait to see you wearing it around town. Absolutely. You'll have to make the E intro or the intro to me the next time at a start line, Eric. I want to meet Joel. He's awesome. He's a really cool guy and he loves what you guys are doing here. So he's a, he's a huge fan. Um, all right, guys. Also, if you want a shirt and you just want to buy it on your own, you can check that out at the p3rstore.com. p3rstore.com is where you'll go. You got All right, it. folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Eric Burnett. Uh, until next time, have fun and keep moving.